Hello students, welcome to this particular session and in this particular session we are going to continue with numericals. Some very very interesting numericals based on finding the average speed and average velocity in various cases, right? So let's start with a very very interesting question. Suppose, let us assume a person starts from his home and reaches a market. He reaches a market which is at a distance of 2.5 km from his home with a speed of say 5 km per hour. So what I have considered is a person starts from his home and goes to a market which is at a distance of 2.5 km from his home with a speed of 5 km per hour. On finding the market closed, the person comes back to his home with a constant speed of say 7.5 km per hour. Right? So what my question is, you are supposed to find out the average speed and average velocity during the time interval t equals to 30 minutes. Second part is during the time interval t equals to 50 minutes and third part is during the time interval t equals to 40 minutes. So these are the three parts of this particular question. Right? First and foremost, these are the two points A and B. Suppose the distance between A and B is 2.5 km. So look, first and foremost, we will find out the time taken by the person to reach from point A to point B. Right? So we will try to find out TA, time taken by the person to reach from point A to point B. Now in uniform motion, when the speed is constant, you are aware, time is given by distance over speed, isn't it? This is the formula. So, in covering the distance from A to B, what is the distance covered? 2.5 km. Right? And with what speed the person is covering this distance? 5 km per hour. It is 5 km per hour. So what do you get is 1 by 2 hour. Right? And in minutes, if you convert it, so it will be 60 by 2 minutes. And that is, it will be 30 minutes. Fine? This is the first part. So basically the person, while moving from his home to the market with a speed of 5 km per hour, takes 30 minutes to reach the market. So this is clear. Second step is to find out the time taken by the person to come back from the market to his home. Right? So for that let's find out TBA. Again same form, distance over speed. So while coming back he is covering the same distance of 2.5 km. And with what speed it is coming back? 7.5 km per hour. So it is 1 by 3. 2.5 divided by 7.5 is 1 by 3. And the units will be in R. Let's convert it in minutes. Right? So it will be 1 by 3 into 60 minutes. So that will be 20 minutes. So obviously, while coming back, he rushes to his home. He travels with a greater speed. So it is but obvious he takes much lesser time in coming back to his home. So... 30 minutes and going from home to market and again from market to his home back he is taking 20 minutes. So what is the total duration of his journey? 30 plus 20 that is 50 minutes. Right? So we need to remember this fact. Now let's solve each other three question. Now solution. Let's consider on the first part. After a duration of 30 minutes, we are supposed to find out the average speed and the average velocity. So, a person starts from here, P equals to 0. 
initially. So after 30 minutes, we will be over here. After 30 minutes, the person will be at point B. So during this 30 minutes, he has travelled along a straight path in the same direction, right? So whenever a body moves along a straight path in the same direction, its average speed is equal to average velocity, right? So in this case, average speed would be equal to average velocity, which in turn would be equal to 5 km per hour. No need to solve it. It is already given the uniform speed. So this will be its average velocity, this will be its average speed. So whenever the speed is constant, then the instantaneous speed is equal to its average speed, which is what I have written over here. So after p equals to 30 minutes, what would be the average speed or average velocity? Both would be equal to 5 km per hour. So no need for any sort of calculation. Now second, after the duration of 50 minutes, p equals to 0, it will take 30 minutes and again further 20 minutes to come back over here. So 30 plus 20, so we reach home after 50 minutes. Right? So after 50 minutes, what he does was, he moves from A to B and again he moves from B to A and comes back to point A. So total round trip is completed in 50 minutes. So students look, during the entire interval of 50 minutes, the person's initial position is coinciding with his final position. So what is the displacement? It is zero. So therefore average velocity throughout the entire journey is also zero. So average velocity for a duration of 50 minutes would be zero. Because during this 50 minutes the person is coming back to his home. So displacement is zero therefore average velocity is zero. What about the average speed? Now let's make use of the formula directly which we have derived in the earlier section. I have told you, whenever there is a case of a body covering equal displacements in unequal intervals of time, then the average speed is given by the harmonic mean of V1 and V2. So what is the formula? Twice V1 V2 divided by V1 plus V2. Isn't it? So we can easily solve it. So let's substitute the value. Twice V1 is 5, V2 is 7.5 and this is 5 plus 7.5. So what do you get is 10 into 7.5 divided by 12.5. This get cancelled. So 25, 3, 75, 25, 5. So it is 6 km per hour. So what is the average speed for the time interval of 50 minutes? It is 6 km per hour. What is the average velocity during the time interval of 50 minutes? It is 0. Clear? So, that's the second part, right? Now, this is very, very interesting. This is very interesting. Let's consider the third part. For interval t equals to 40 minutes. Now, look, students. In the first 30 minutes, we will reach from point A to point B. In the next 10 minutes, is taking total of 20 minutes and coming back from B to A. So in 10 minutes, he will be exactly at midpoint. Midpoint means if this is 2.5 km, so this distance would be 1.25 km, half of 2.5, half of 2.5 is 1.25, isn't it? So look, <coughs> this is t equals to 0. At the start, the person starts moving towards market. He reaches market at t equals to 30 minutes and he reaches point C after t equals to 40 minutes. Total time taken by the person to move from B to A is 20 minutes. So in 10 minutes he will be exactly at the midpoint of his home and market. So after the duration of 40 minutes he will be covering this distance. He will reach at point C. So after t equals to 40 minutes A is initial point and C is final point. So Let's calculate average velocity. You are aware, average velocity is displacement. Net displacement divided by time taken. Right? Displacement during this 40 minutes. This is the initial position, this is the final position. So what is the displacement, students? 
it is 1.25 kilometer right this is the initial point and this is the final point displacement is the shortest possible path between the initial and the final portion given by a straight line right so this is the displacement a to c 1.25 kilometer what is the time taken 30 plus 10 that is total 40 minutes you can convert this 40 minutes in r so it will be 40 by 60 because we want to represent velocity or speed in terms of kilometer per hour. So what you get is 1.25 into 6 by 4. That is 1.25 into 3 by 2. Which in turn will give us 3.75 divided by 2. Which is 1.875 kilometer per hour. So this will be the average velocity of the person during the interval t equals to 40 minutes. Clear? Now the last part is left. I mean during the interval t equals to 40 minutes we are able to calculate the average velocity. Now well, let's find out the average speed during this interval. <coughs> let's determine the average speed. Now average speed, we all are aware, average speed is total length of the path, that is total path length divided by total time taken, total time taken. So we are dealing with this case for a duration of 40 minutes. So what is the total path length covered by that person during 40 minutes? That is. 2.5 kilometer plus 1.25 kilometer. 2.5 plus 1.25 kilometer. This is the total path length of the person after 40 minutes, right? Total time taken is 40 minutes. 40 minutes in hour will be 40 by 60 hour. So you can easily convert it, right? So it will be 3.75 divided by 2 by 3. So it will be in kilometer per hour. So we can easily solve it. Right? So it comes to be 5.625 kilometer per hour. So this is the average speed of the person. So student, this was a very very important portion. I think this numerical must clear your concepts. Related to speed and velocity. Related to speed and velocity. Right? So you need to consider. While talking about speed, we need to consider the actual path length. And while talking about velocity, we need to consider the displacement. Right? And when displacement is zero, average velocity is zero. Right? Let's consider the second unit. A simple one, relatively a simple number. Okay, my question is a person drives his scooter, a person drives his scooter with a speed of with a speed of say forty kilometer per hour for first half an hour. For first half an hour. Right? Again, I am repeating the question. A motorist or a person drives his scooter at a speed of 40 km per hour for the first half an hour. For the first half an hour. Right? And he drives to the speed of 60 km per hour for the second half hour. For the second half half hour. What will be his average speed and average velocity if the person is assumed to be moving along a straight path in the same direction. That is consider the motion to be one dimensional. Right? So students think over it. Which formula to be used? Look, here the duration is same. Duration is same. 
so we are supposed to consider the case where the body covers unequal distances or displacements in equal intervals of time and students we have already discussed the formula to be used in such a case right whenever there is a case of a body covering unequal distances or displacements in equal intervals of time then the average speed or average velocity is given by the arithmetic mean of v1 and v2 arithmetic mean right which is sum of all the observations divided by total number of observations so in this case since the body is moving along the same straight path so average speed would be equal to average velocity it would be simply equal to v1 plus v2 by 2 it is the arithmetic mean again i must remind you if the body covers equal displacements in unequal intervals of time then this formula is used twice v1 v2 divided by v1 plus v2 this formula is to be used when the body covers equal displacements in unequal intervals of time but here it is the case of equal intervals of time so here we will make use of this formula which is the arithmetic mean of v1 and v2 right so let's solve it Okay, next time we see this sort, it will be 40 plus 60 divided by 2. Obviously, it will be 50 km per hour. Simple. So, students, all the numericals are simple. The only thing is the concept should be very, very clear. Right? You need to understand the formula to be used appropriately. Read the question very, very carefully and then try to recall or recollect the appropriate formula right so this was another question related to average speed and average velocity let's discuss some graphical question right so let us consider position time graph to be given let us consider position time graph to be given like this this is the third portion we are attempting. This is it. Suppose this is time which is given to be in seconds 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and suppose 6, right? And this is suppose the position. This is suppose the position given. So let us consider to be 5, 10, 15, 20, right? And suppose it's given in meters so we are talking about xt graph or position time graph suppose the graph is like this okay this is the graph this suppose a this is b this is c and this is d suppose this is the graph given right we are supposed to find out we are supposed to find out the average speed or average velocity we are supposed to find out the average velocity when the body or between the time interval t equals to 0 to t equals to 2 seconds Second is t equals to 2 to t equals to 4 seconds and third is between the interval t equals to 4 to t equals to 6 seconds. These are the time intervals during which the velocity of the body is to be determined. Right? So students first and foremost you need to write the coordinates. You need to write your coordinate and axis of each of these points. So what is the what are the coordinates over here? It's 0, 10. What are the coordinates over here? It's 2, 10. What are the coordinates over here? It is 4 and 20. Over here, it is 6 and 0. So, first step is to write the coordinates. Right? Second step is, most important one, we are aware the slope of Position time graph, the slope of position time graph gives us, gives the velocity, 
this is a crucial and important point. In the previous session, we have discussed that the slope of the position time graph will give the velocity. Right? That should be our approach. In order to find out the slope, we need to find out the coordinates first. So slope will give us the velocity. Right? And slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. That's the formula for the slope. Right? What is the slope in case of a? Let's consider the first part. That is from time interval 0 to 2. 0 second to 2 second. Take okay? that is from a to b. What is the slope from a to b? There is no slope. The line is flat. It is parallel to the horizontal axis. The slope is 0. So the speed must also be 0. The velocity of the body must be 0 over here. Because slope is 0. You can verify this fact. The velocity of the body from A to B, that is from T equals to 0 to T equals to 2 seconds, right? It can be considered to be x1 y1, it can be considered to be x2 y2. Consider it to be x1 y1, consider it to be x2 y2. What's the formula for this slope? y2 minus y1. Look, y2 minus y1, 10 minus 10 divided by x2 minus x1, that is 2 minus 0. So if numerator is 0, it will become 0. Right? So also make use of your common sense. With the passage of time, the position of the body remain fixed. It means that the body must be at rest. The body is not moving at all. So if the body is not moving, so its average speed or velocity would be 0. So from A to B, that is during the time interval t equals 0 to t equals 2 seconds, the slope is 0, which is what we have proved. Therefore, velocity is 0. Right? Let's consider the second case. We need to find out the velocity of the body during the time interval 2 to 4 seconds. 2 to 4 seconds. This is 2, this is 4. That is from B to C. Okay. Now consider B to C. B is the initial, C is the final one. Consider this to be x1, y1. This to be x2, y2. And the formula for the slope is, as I have told you, it is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, right? And slope of position time graph, x t graph will give us velocity of the body. So, let's proceed. y2 minus y1. This y2, this y1. 20 minus 10, right? Divided by x2 minus x1, 4 minus 2. So, that will give us 10 by 2, that is 5 meter per second. It's in meter, it's in second. So, this velocity of the body during the interval t equals to 2 to t equals to 4 seconds, that is from b to c, is 5 meter per second. Let's consider the third part. <coughs> we are supposed to find out the velocity during the interval from 4 to 6 seconds. 4 to 6 seconds, this one, 4 to 6 seconds. So, what to do? It is from c to b. Again, y2 minus y1. Now, consider this to be x1, y1 and the final point to be x2, y2. So what's the formula? y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. y2 minus y1, that is 0 minus 20 divided by this minus this, x2 minus x1, 6 minus 4, that is minus 20 by 2, that is minus 10 meter per second. The velocity of the body can be negative. It represents the direction basically, the negative sign. So, the velocity of the body during the interval t equals to 4 to t equals 6 seconds, that is from C to D is minus 10 meter per second. So, students, I must again tell you the significance of the position time graph. The slope, mark my words, please mark my words, the slope of the position time graph will get the velocity of the body under consideration. Right? That is what we have done up over here. Let's discuss some other graphical question. Let us consider VT graph. VT graph means velocity time graph. So, let's proceed with our fourth question. Here, I have told you the significance of VT graph. The area under VT graph that gives the distance or the displacement covered by the body between the two given intervals of time. Between the two given intervals of time. So let's check it out. 
So this is the next question, right? This is the fourth question we are attempting. This is suppose time axis in seconds and this is suppose velocity. It's given in SI, that is meter per second. Suppose it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Right? It's time T in seconds. And this velocity, suppose it's 5 meter per second, 10 meter per second, 15 meter per second, 20 meter per second. Velocity as you are aware it's a vector quantity. So it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be zero. So this is suppose minus 5. This is suppose minus 10. Right? So this vertical axis represents velocity. Horizontal axis it represents time. So Vt graph of a body is given. This is how it is given, suppose. Suppose this VT graph is given to you. Right? This is given. This is given. I am indicating it with the help of dark line. This is the graph given. This is the graph given. Okay, now the question is find the distance and displacement of the body in the interval from t equals to 0 to t equals to 6 seconds. Find distance and displacement. So, this is the question. We are supposed to find the distance and the displacement covered by the body during the interval t equals to 0 to t equals to 6 seconds. Right? Let us first find distance. Let us find distance first. So, what is the crucial point? What is the main point? It is the area under Vt graph, it will give us distance or displacement, right? This is the crucial point. So, t equals 0 to t equals to 6 seconds, t equals 0 to t equals 6 seconds. So, we are supposed to calculate the area of this portion. This is suppose first, this is suppose second and let us consider this to be the third area, third enclosed area. This is suppose the third area. Right? So, we need to find out the area of these three geometrical figures. Right? So, distance would be total distance from t equals 0 to t equals 6 seconds. Area of this portion. Look, it's in the form of a rectangle. So, its area would be length into breadth. So, over here, its dimension is 3 units. This is 3 units. And this is 10 units. So, what will be its area? 10 into 3. 10 into 3. Plus this area of first one. Plus area of second. What are the dimensions over here? This is 5 units. And this is 1 unit. This one is 1 unit. This one is 5 units. Isn't it? Now since we are dealing with distance. So no need to take this negative sign. Distance. As we regret it can't be negative. We need to add all the areas in the case of distance. Right? So what is the area of this portion? 5 into 1. This is the area of the second portion. Now, this is in the form of a triangle. Its area is also to be found. The formula is half base into height. What is the base? This is 2 units. And what is the height? It is 20 units. So, what is the formula? Half base into attitude. Clear? Half base, 2 units, and attitude that is. 20 units. So let's solve it. So it will be 30 plus 5 plus 20. So it will be 55 meters. So students, this is the distance covered by the body during the time interval t equals to 0 to t equals to 6 seconds. Right? So in distance, all the areas are to be added up. All the areas are to be added up. Whether they are lying in the first quadrant, 
और भी फोर्थ क्वार